Thomas was alone. Wow, are we at first thought to have? Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three, falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to, what's the word? Jump. A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. He was starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Nah, paranoia. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might or might not be important. It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No, too obvious. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made another mental note. Four, water. Not good to be avoided. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. 
you even being graceful at times. Well, not actually. Not technically graceful. It's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Grace, Grace. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. Because, on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up, if only for a few levels. chance, a moment to shine. This was game day. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? Ah, 
John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he practiced in the mirror all these years. happy to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. The angry orange one was less immediately likeable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John.
was interesting. A floating target. This would require coordination, balance and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. eventually. She was rubbish at jumping and she moved slowly. She felt a little like her continued existence was breaking some kind of natural order. The crumbling pillar was a dramatic death, she supposed. Wait, what? Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she was not, in fact, dead. It was at that moment that Claire realized she had superpowers. She'd need a cape. There was no getting around that. You couldn't be a superhero without a cape. Claire didn't want confusion. If you saw a cape, that made matters clear. You knew what you were dealing with. Claire was all about communication. And, you know, floating in water, which was her superpower. All right, fear not, my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you. Claire needed to come up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Claire was rubbish. Claire arrived just in time. It was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. water began to rise, Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. Claire wondered if Thomas would make a good sidekick. Or was she more the Lone Avenger type? She liked that. The sole hero in a world of rectangles and conveniently placed pools of toxic water. were a bit of a fixture here. Claire wondered why the world made it so difficult.
probably needed a nemesis, a villain who would show their true colours at the worst possible moment, hurting all she held dear. Chris was the most obvious choice. He seemed stroppy enough, and his jump was so pathetic that it conveniently avoided Claire's insecurities. Yes, Chris. Diabolical Chris. The fiendish Christopher. Plotting Claire's downfall? If Claire was honest, and she had to be because she was a superhero, this was a troubling turn of events. Still, there were reasonably sized bodies of water to cross. over water, eh? Claire's newly heightened senses told her that there were multiple paths across with various possible configurations of the little posse. They were doing really well. Claire hoped she could get them all across. John was fully aware he could do this alone. Thomas hoped he'd never have to. odd, because she wasn't meant to be alone. She needed to be where there were rectangles to save. Being the only superhero in a given space kind of defeats the object. Spikes? That was new. Claire avoided them. She decided they were most likely her kryptonite. Not the rubbish red kryptonite either, the proper radioactive green stuff. The world was repeating. 
and this time Thomas was here. Claire felt something had gone wrong. There was a disturbance in the force. Something had altered the Matrix. The world was reacting to their progress. It was amassing its forces. It was plotting against them. Claire finally had a nemesis. This one was behind a wall. Maybe he'd never know what she could do. Maybe, maybe, they could just have a conversation. Hang out. As long as he didn't find out what she could do. Which would never happen so long as they stayed separate. Laura didn't have time to worry about the ominous pixel cloud. It had been following her for some time, and it had kept itself to itself until now. More important... As the square, who had shyly introduced himself as Chris, bounced atop Laura, she began to worry that he was just using her like all the others had. They'd all bounce too, and then they disappeared when her back was turned. Only the ominous pixel cloud ever remained, looking a little bigger and a little less hungry with every disappearing friend. With every bounce, Laura found herself less and less irritated by Chris. She started to miss him when he wasn't there, on another platform or something. wonder what he was up to. Was he missing her? He wasn't saying very much. Chris was in love. She was perfect. He had to tell her so. At some point, he would definitely tell her. Probably best to wait for a moment the large, ominous pixel cloud wasn't about, though. Yeah, probably best to wait. Mm-hmm. 
Chris was massively disappointed to run into the gang again. He'd enjoyed the alone time with his new girlfriend. Was it too early to refer to Laura as his girlfriend? Only if I say it out loud, he told himself. He didn't want to scare her off. The others seemed suspicious of Laura and the eager-looking pixel cloud of death which seemed to be watching her. Sure, they'd use her inherent bounciness to reach slightly higher jump points, but they wouldn't strike up a conversation with her. Chris found them rude. Rude and always there. The others wouldn't drop it. Who's that cloud guy? Why is he following us? What's that rumbling hungry sound he keeps making? Chris, can we just leave Laura behind? Rude.
Laura liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These ones seem to be sticking around too. Not like those losers from before. cloud was getting closer. It was spending more and more time hovering around. Laura could tell it was making the others uncomfortable. did not like the cloud. He'd long since stopped listing his observations, but he instinctively observed that this thing was bad. And 
He'd been right about the water. Chris was in love, and that was fantastic and everything, but that didn't mean they could let the doom cloud keep following them. Thomas was going to put his foot down once they got to the next level. Chris Miss Thomas Wow Did not see that coming He felt a little guilty too Without his love for Laura And subsequent reunion with the guys 
Thomas would probably still be with them. Chris wondered if Thomas was still alive somewhere. He wasn't going to go looking for him, but he did wonder, and, and that, that showed character. Maybe the others hadn't abandoned Laura all that time ago. It began to dawn on her that she might not be the tragic victim she'd always assumed.
John looked at Claire. It was just them now. She muttered something under her breath about a vow of vengeance. He didn't see the point. Fighting that thing seemed to be a pretty futile idea. struggled to get to the next portal. John hoped that he would be the next to get eaten. He didn't want to be alone. First time in a while, John didn't have an audience. He was alone. Leaping from black square to black square didn't seem nearly as exciting now, it just seemed empty. James, he's literally insane, kind of way. He'd not seen anyone else in a long time. 
not since getting eaten by that cloudy, pixely thing. He turned up here in some kind of cage. He'd gotten out, but it had taken a long time. liked being alone. No one to insult him or question his unique disregard for Newtonian laws. Hey Jimmy, where are you going? Up? The next he was being freed from a cage by a green guy with a nervous laugh. He knew he had to get back to them. His turquoise hero seemed uncomfortable. Thomas imagined he'd feel the same way if he fell upwards all the time. If he didn't know better, he'd have thought James didn't want to meet everyone. wondered why the cloud thing had brought them both here. This was working. James and Thomas, working together, could get anywhere. James didn't seem to understand the immense ability he possessed. grudgingly helped Thomas to each portal. He knew that eventually they'd find the others and then he'd go back to being the weird one again. He decided to enjoy the time they had left.
Alice even want to spend time with James? Was he not repulsed by his weird colour? Did he not care about his inversions? back and laughed. <laughs> the quadrilaterals were apparently after some friends of theirs. How petty an adventure. She spoke in terms she could only hope they might understand of the fountain of wisdom, the channel through which all data flowed. could leap in the very air itself. She was like an eagle or a flea. More, more like an eagle. She had vowed long ago that she would know this world. She would know what this world was. And she, Sarah, the Red One, who spoke wisely for a lesser, offered Sarah their help. So long as she then helped them save their friends. He said that he too had wondered of the secrets of this world and would quite like a go on the wisdom fountain. That was okay. Sarah marvelled at his foolishness, but accepted his help. wondered at the possibilities of the outer world. She had heard legends of a third dimension. Perhaps she'd encounter one of those curves the blind square had spoken of. Jump each? These were truly weak creatures. They possess heart, though. Sarah might consider taking them with her, if they were up to it, which they were probably not.
They were close. Sarah, sense the presence of the fountain. Just one more portal to go, and then she would have the knowledge. And then, escape! seem pretty petty now. This? Well, this was all knowledge. All of it. Right in front of him. He was sorry Sarah couldn't step into it too. He could tell she felt the same way. From the shouting. And the screaming. Thomas was connected to the internet for 12 seconds. And he had seen everything. He'd seen the cats who couldn't spell. He'd heard of the arrow through the knee. He felt there was probably a thing called cake, but that it was a lie. To do. He hoped the others would understand. They were just beyond the next portal. been trapped permanently from the moment the clouds ate them. He explained this to the others. It was impossible to gauge their reaction. After all, they were just rectangles.
Sarah was deflated. She'd not even got close to the fountain. She could tell from the earnest expression on Thomas that the information it had imparted was clearly important. Sarah knew her destiny was now to support him. Claire could not accept that this had all been futile. She was a superhero. There had to be a way. Not for her to get out. Red had been pretty clear on that, but... There must be thousands of other AIs up there, unaware of their situation. Was there a way to help them?
Atlas led his friends to the creation matrix, the system which generated the worlds up above. He had a plan. They were going to redesign the world. That's what the humans did. They changed the world to suit them. Why couldn't they do the same? was sceptical. He knew his abilities would be of no use to anyone, but Laura smiled at him. And immediately, he knew he had to do everything he could to help them get there. been born special. She understood that now. She was created to help others. If her bounce could be passed on, then this would all have been worthwhile. the idea of being an architect. He wanted to modify the world to help others. He was sick of these contrived spaces, these intentionally obtuse paths and puzzles. He'd do things differently. 
he'd empower the AIs above. John's massive jumps were dwarfed by Sarah. For the first time in his life, he felt humbled, not as good as someone else. He realized that he wanted to make every AI up there feel as heroic as he had. He liked the sound of that. felt weird, but he realised now that everyone else was too. They were a crew of weirdos. Weirdness that would save all the normals up above. The other AIs would escape. It would all be down to seven rectangles with very different relationships to gravity. Thomas knew he'd never meet Nathan Fillion, or a Transformer. He'd never get to visit Gotham City or eat at movies. It didn't matter. If he and his friends jumped into the creation matrix, they could give everyone else in the simulation a chance to.
beneath his feet. Something had shifted. The shape in front of him hinted at a possibility. Wow. He couldn't do that before. <laughs> Joe was happy. They'd settled here. They'd not seen another AI for many cycles, and she liked it that way. She saw Sam leap into the shifter with fear. world letting him do this. It was dumb. It was awesome, obviously, but why? They seemed to be leading him up. Up and to the right. Joe wished Sam would stop. This was just like the time with the pixel clouds. They hadn't seen any for a while. He was always running off like this. should be. not occurred randomly. They had been created. He set off. Gray listened to the old man. The shifters had been placed in the world by the architects, AIs who sacrificed themselves to fuel their escape. There was an outer world, a world beyond the confines of their universe.
Jo was growing to like her newfound abilities. Maybe Sam had done the right thing after all. It was getting a bit chilly though. Gray had left the old man behind. He had to get to this exit. He had to be the one to get out. A whole world to himself. He had to get there before anyone else did. to get to the other AIs of the world, warn them about Grey. Stop him. Joe and Sam saw Grey across the gap. He waved them over. He seemed, well, nice. They helped him to the next portal. Jump had been together for a long time. They were a machine, a well-oiled machine. They could jump like nobody's business. as one, they acted as one. Thank you. 
Paul bowed before the team. He begged them to help. He told them of the outer world, of the cats who couldn't spell, of the liar, Grey. Up and to the right, they answered in unison. Joe and Sam continued moving upwards. They had to make it. Gray had told the couple he was looking for a lost friend. He'd made something up about being alone on a quest for lost allies. They had eaten it up. along with their spiritual leader, Paul, worked their way right. Team Jump were proud of their progress. They'd obliterated all challenges in their path. Yeah, they'd heard of individuals getting stuck on staircases or stepping stones. This did not happen to Team Jump.
Gray could tell they were nearing the exit portal. He smiled to himself, trying to work out the easiest way of dispensing with his allies when the time came. Jump saw the others beyond the wall. They were doing well. Paul tried to shout a warning, but they couldn't hear him. Gray counted five in Team Jump. Uh, he could take that.
had become. He wasn't responding to Joe's questions or acknowledging them at all. Were they really trying to save his friends? the path ahead wasn't safe. He told the team to wait, that he'd come get them when it was secure. Grey had to be stopped, whatever the cost. separated from its allies for some time. She'd not heard the order to retreat. She was shocked by the appearance of the four aberrations below. The old one seemed to be leading the liar to an outcropping. It was within her reach. She could remove them both. The couple could wait. They weren't going anywhere.
Joe and Sam ran. They had no idea where these final portals would lead, but it had to be better than this. leapt 